Hi, my name is Nikola Lov with VD Bioscience. Today, I would like to talk to you about high parameter data analysis. As we know, the first commercial flow cytometry was created by the Heisenberg Lab with the help with a VD engineering group in the early 1970s. The further development of new fluorescent dye, monoclonal antibodies, and instrument has contributed to the advance of high parameter flow cytometry, which many scientists leverage today. Using more color can sometimes mean more challenges, especially for data analysis. So how to analyze high parameter data? The basic goal of any data analysis is to define population, visualize phenotypes, and enumerate differences between experimental conditions. Manual gates are essential, and they are not going anywhere with high parameter analysis. In this paper, they did a manual gate analysis on the 30 parameter, and there's nothing wrong with that. But manual gate can be elusive. Why elusive, you may ask? A 32 color experiment has 496 n by n plot. Assuming it takes about 2 minutes per plot to draw your gate, it will take about 17 hours just to set up your gating hierarchy. It is just impossible to look at all n by n plots combination. The use of dimensional reduction and cluster algorithm offer an unbiased and objective summary of distinct combinatorial states where phenotype can be visualized and determine how population change. So then, how do I analyze my data using dimensional reduction and clustering algorithm? The first step is to clean up your data post-acquisition. For more information on this crucial step, please refer to the cleaning up your data video in this series. This step will remove batch effect and all unwanted events of your sample, clogged debris, dead cells. You could even select a specific cell type, for example CD45 positive cells if your research is focusing on leukocyte. The second step is composition. It's an absolutely key of any high dimensional analysis. As we add more marker, the complexity of our panel threatens to become unwieldy. The composition platform built in Flojo is quite flexible, permitting spectral and mixing with or without weighting channel. You can also choose between the traditional method of composition or using the newer autospill autospread method. The autospill method has the advantage of being able to subtract out autofluorescence. And you can even compare matrices using various methods to determine which one works the best. Now that our samples are QC'd and composited, we want to annotate them. We will annotate our sample using keyword. Keywords are metadata within your FCS file that allows the description of each sample. For example, simulation, tissue, time point, etc. This step is in no case, but it results in great efficiency downstream, allowing you to cross compare different experimental variables rapidly. Pro tip, I like to label my custom keyword starting with a star, so it's easier to find them in the list of keywords as they all group together. The primary difference between our standard immunophenotyping and our high dimensional workflow is the concatenation step. We have to merge all of our samples into one file before we can run the high dimensional tools due to the nature of how those algorithms work. Now that our sample is cleaned up and concatenated, it's time for some dimensional reduction. The goal of dimensional reduction is to easily visualize our multi-parameter data in a single two-dimensional plot while preserving the overall structure of the data as much as possible. Event with a similar multi-dimensional expression pattern grouped together within the dimensional reduction data space. Within Flojo, we currently have six dimensional reduction algorithms. Disney, UMAP, TriMap, and we did some PacMap and FATE. The most currently used in the field are TSNI and UMAP. Dimensional reduction and clustering goes hand in hand. One is not incredibly useful without the other. The reason we will use the clustering algorithm is one, to crush the data faster. This algorithm will identify all the population present in the dataset normally within minutes versus the 17 hours I mentioned earlier or two, to use the clustering tool to get a fresh perspective on the data. 
all have their pros and cons, but the most used in the field currently is Flowsum. Flowsum is using a self-organizing map and a key nearest neighbor to generate cluster population. Great, now I have my visualization and the different cluster. But how do I identify the phenotype of those cells efficiently and compare the expression between my experimental condition? Thanks to Cluster Explorer plugin, I will be able to complete the phenotyping and comparison steps. Cluster Explorer, via a series of interactive panels, let me look at the number of cells in each cluster, the expression of each marker for each cluster, to gate on markers, and to see the expression of my cluster between my experimental conditions. To summarize, even if manual gating is not going away, Using dimensional reduction and clustering algorithm will allow you to explore your data entirely and potentially characterize and or discover cell subset changing with your experimental condition. To view more educational video like this, please visit bdbioscience.com.